and it has no other identity than what the Londoners choose to give it through their patterns of interaction. The local identity is more easily accepted and is less contentious than the national or British identity. It has therefore a great role to play in sustaining a multicultural society, a greater role than is generally recognized by the theorists of the nation state. I think it's very important to bear in mind, it's not fully appreciated, that a culturally homogeneous society, which is what underpins the nation state, generally focuses on the nation state and the national identity. In a multicultural society, the logic points in a different direction. While central identity has a role to play, local identities become extremely important and national and local identities need to be integrated and go together. Let me conclude. So far as the present of the multi-ethnic Britain is concerned, we have made considerable progress in some areas and not much in others. The future of the multi-ethnic Britain depends on three things. Our ability to consolidate and build on the progress we have made. Our ability to tackle areas of life where we have been negligent, uh, where we haven't made much progress. And finally, our sensitivity to new problems that, as I said, are beginning to appear on the horizon and our ability to confront them with requisite clarity. If the past is any guide, we can be cautiously optimistic on all three counts. I might be proved wrong, but pessimism is not a luxury that is permitted either to those of us who are politically active or those of us who are academics and intend to believe that the future lies with us and is a matter of our control. So thank you very much and I'll be very happy to answer questions. What keeps you going? <laughs> I think partly self-interest because I live in this country, I have children and grandchildren, I want to make sure that this society is reasonably stable and safe for them, and partly the kind of moral commitment one has to the kind of world one would like to see. But I think you have something deeper in mind, have you? No, I, just, I, I think that given that a lot of people here are uh, interested in, in fighting for race equality, just, just hearing kind of what keeps you what keeps you going, keeps, keeps that, uh, those ideas at the forefront of your mind is, is, is useful. Well, look, I haven't given as much of my life or as much of my energy to the cause of race equality as I should and could have, because one has other demands and you have to allocate your resources uh, as fits in with your uh, expectations of life. But in my case, I think it's partly, uh, simply as somebody who stands for certain values. I think one wants to see a society in which those values are, are realized. I mean, that would be a simple, moral, rather preachy kind of answer, but that's the sort of answer I give. Okay. So turning to, to the audience, uh, some questions. It takes questions upstairs first. Uh, in, in the front here. Um, yeah. Hello, Biku, it's Veda here. Um, Perhaps a delicate question, um, given that Trevor Phillips was one of the commissioners on the Commission on Multi-Ethnic Britain. But I wondered, um, what's your response to Trevor Phillips' comment a couple of years ago that multiculturalism is dead? We'll take a couple, a couple more. Uh, maybe just next to you in, in the front here. Mark Wadsworth, editor of the latest.com, and I'm glad you tackled the issue of um, Muslim youth alienation. You didn't talk about young African Caribbean shooting each other. Maybe that's something that people like myself will have to deal with. Uh, my point really is about the 27 black and minority ethnic MPs that are in Parliament. There are actually 39 of them in the House of Lords and how useless they are despite the black section campaign that I led from 85 to 87 to put them there. Um, we don't have BME MPs, we have MPs that happen to be BME. That's the issue, isn't it? They don't get off their black and brown asses um, because the political movements aren't there to make the demands and to give them the support. I'd like your view on how we can 
mobilize them and get them to fight for the black agenda. Thank you. And then a uh, question just in the middle here, guy in the, in the grey jumper. That's right. Hi, Darren Williams from Birkbeck. Um, my question is a little bit more specific, I think, um, <laughs> to something that you said towards the end around integrating uh, national identity and, and local identity. I was hoping that you could expand on those comments because I, I, I can understand the fragmentation uh, that you'd have at a local level and how that could, in your eyes, be reconciled with a, a much broader population across um, you know, the country or, or the nation. Last question: the Local and national identity, and then talk about how the poor people integrate. Yeah, I think you you alluded to um, integrating the national identity with local identity, and I wanted you to expand on that that uh, comment a little bit further to just explain what you mean and how that can be achieved from where people identify with the local, how they can then identify with the national because it's such a, a broader area. Yeah. Well, first was about, uh, can you hear me at the back? Not very well, all right. The first question, I hope you heard all the three questions. One was about Trevor Phillips saying some years ago that uh, multiculturalism is dead. Uh, now, without commenting on what uh, Trevor is, a, uh, his own personal view. I mean, my... Uh